My name is Steve Bassey. Uh, I've been involved in software security since I was a teenager. Um, I personally got interested in blockchain in about 2010. Uh, I read the original Bitcoin white paper and was uh, really interested that someone built a distributed system for money, right? With nothing more than a than a private key, you could control funds. That was very interesting to me. Um, my team and I are basically a bunch of hackers, so we've always liked sort of uh, cool technical solutions to broader problems like money, uh, like antivirus, things like that. We were interested in this idea of decentralized money and decentralized ecosystems and how we could improve antivirus by creating a decentralized environment for security experts to compete against each other and detecting new viruses as they came out. And that's, that's sort of the ori origin of Polyswarm. WannaCry was interesting, right? This idea that you could create, if you're a bad guy, you can create software that holds people's computer hostage and make them give you money to release your data. Um, that was a new paradigm, and I think we saw it at scale with WannaCry. We really saw it affecting a lot of people, hospitals, little old ladies. Um, the interesting thing about Polyswarm is, is we provide the same incentive, but for the good guys, for the defenders, right? So the idea is, instead of being the bad guy and locking somebody's up, files up and ransoming, we encourage the good guys to detect things like WannaCry. And if they're faster at detecting new viruses like WannaCry or new threats like um, you know, any of the state-sponsored stuff out there, uh, they can actually get paid thousands of times for the same detection. So they really just take the knowledge that's in here and they produce software that detects these new viruses and uh, essentially they can earn passive revenue. And this is the first time that anybody's tried to do this in the antivirus world. So we're really incentivizing people to stop being the bad guy and start being the good guy. So in reality, there's no, there's no one way it happens to every organization. It's a, it's a combination of factors, right? Some organizations, like some hospitals in the UK, were just a victim of bad computer security practices. So they, they don't update their Windows machines. They didn't install antivirus software in the first place. Um, you know, people open attachments without virus scanning them. So Polyswarm would help with some of those things. Uh, we, would, we would help detect new things like WannaCry faster than maybe a single vendor would. Um, a single vendor is like the traditional antivirus companies that you might install on your machine. The advantage of Polyswarm is, is we bring the wisdom of the crowd uh, like essentially to the antivirus problem. So if anybody in Polyswarm's ecosystem can detect a new threat, they can actually pr help protect users. But in reality, if someone's got poor, bad computer security practices, um, uh, you know, there's, there's a variety of factors that go into that. And it's really about just upping the awareness and using better tools to detect new threats. I think those are the two things. So a lot of credit needs to be given to the early systems like Bitcoin and the later systems like Ethereum. This idea that you can, with blockchain, with smart contracts specifically, and with all these incentives, you can essentially program new marketplaces. So in our case, we really wanted to leverage smart contracts, small incentives to redo the way antivirus is done and really reward uh, security experts who produce smaller antivirus engines that detect new threats, really incentivize them at a, at a file level, at a small microtransaction level to do better protecting users. And two things about blockchain excite us. One, the ability to give small rewards to these antivirus engines. And two, the ability to, um, to record the performance of each engine on, on a medium like a blockchain that even we as Polyswarm, where we developed the software to make this possible, we can't change that history because that history is essentially immutably recorded in a blockchain that we don't fully control, right? So even if some antivirus company said, we want to pay you, Polyswarm, a million dollars to change our history, to show, you know, to, to say that we've done better historically than we really have done, we can't do that. So you don't have to trust us, Polyswarm, to keep a record of somebody's performance. You can trust the technology, the blockchain itself, the decentralized participants to keep an accurate record of how people are really doing in our ecosystem. That's what excites us about it. 
One of the things we think will happen when we release Polyswarm is it provides a different economic avenue to people who are currently scamming people or attacking people with malware, right? So you've got this guy in Ukraine or in Latvia or wherever, right? And sometimes the only way he can make a living is by creating ransomware and sending it out into the world so he gets paid for his creation, right? Because his alternatives aren't that good. Maybe he doesn't have very good job prospects locally or he can't find technical employment locally, but he's got a very technical skill set. We think Polyswarm will help turn people like this uh, into from attackers to defenders, right? Where instead of scamming users or creating ransomware or attempting to hold people's files hostage, they'll actually create software that will look for these types of attacks um, and help protect users instead of instead of actually exploiting them. I think the, pro the projects that are going to be successful leveraging blockchain as a tool are the ones that take an old problem we've had, right? Like, at the core of our problem, it's, it's how do we get incentives in the hands of defenders wherever they are, and how do we get those incentives, those small incentives to them routinely without some middleman, right? With like a bank or whatever. And we've created Polyswarm to do that, but the successful projects, I think, are the ones that take an old problem, like how do I get small amounts of money to some guy over there without a middleman, and they sort of take that, um, that problem space and reframe it. For example, you know, how do I pay people in the third world efficiently, right? How do I create micro loans to help people out of poverty, right? Uh, if they can use blockchain to sort of rethink these problems and uh, create a new solution that wasn't possible through like the traditional banking infrastructure before, or wasn't possible because local governments are corrupt and there was no way to sort of remove that middleman. I think those are the projects that are going to succeed personally, um, with the ones that use this as a tool to solve an existing problem 